fellas, today we're going to be discussing who is the worst person at every job in the UFC. Now, there's so many jobs in the UFC, but we're going to be talking about the relevant ones today. You know, the fighters, behind the scenes, commentators, all that stuff. We're going to be looking at different jobs in the UFC and we're going to be picking out who is the worst at every job. And who has made the company worse? Who has left an, a, a bad imprint on the, U on the UFC? Or just who doesn't do their job properly and should never have worked for the UFC in the in the first place? Let me know if you want to do a, if you want me to do a part two for this where I do the best at every job. But we're going to be doing the worst. Starting off with the worst fighter, CM Punk. Listen, I don't think it's any I don't think it's any um you know surprise that CM Punk is the worst fighter on the roster. The only thing he had going for him was he was a big name because he was in the WWE, and that's why he was accepted into the into the UFC because he was originally in the WWE. He was a big name. Um, he had a little bit more fight IQ than Michael Chandler, but apart from that, he didn't really have anything going for him. I mean, he, he debuted. I think it was Mickey Gall who absolutely mauled him. You know, it wasn't even competitive. Took him down, mauled him. If that fight would have gone an extra two minutes, I think that there would have been some irreversible damage on CM Punk. So that's when Dana White realised, listen, not everyone is a Brock Lesnar. Not everyone is a Brock Lesnar in the UFC. So um, then they, they give him to Mark Jackson, who is technically a cameraman who knows how to kickbox. Mark Jackson is not a fighter. He's just... He, I don't know how he's managed to get in the UFC, but he's not a fighter. I just know he works behind the scenes for the UFC. And even Mike Jackson beat him. Dana White, I think he fired Mike Jackson. I know he's fought again, but... Apparently, he fired Mike Jackson or was considering to fight Mike Jackson because he couldn't finish CM Punk. And if that's really how you value CM Punk, I don't understand why he put him against Mike Jackson. But CM Punk is the worst fighter. Honestly, probably loses on the feet to Ronda Rousey. I can actually see that happening. His stance was really weird. It's like when you watch those teenager fights on Twitter, CM Punk kind of has that stance. Um, all he has is a nice, nice little takedown, a mid-level takedown. Volkanovski out wrestles him nine, ten times out of ten, even at featherweight. I don't know. I don't know what Dana White was thinking, especially after the Mickey Gall fight. Like, did you really think CM Punk would be the next Brock Lesnar? I don't understand what the thought process was when, was when they were allowing CM Punk in the UFC. But like I said, I'm sure he brought you know a lot more eyes to the UFC from WWE. Probably got the UFC a bit more pay per views and. I don't know. He's got some. He's got more. I I don't know. He just hasn't really got anything going for him. Terrible fighter. Worst in the UFC in my opinion. But listen, there's been some great memes made out of him. But yeah, UFC was never the right option for him. Fair play for trying, but he was terrible. Next up, we got the worst referee, Mario Yamazaki. I mean, I don't think I need to go over this. I think you already know him. He will. He. he this guy would be great in ancient Rome, Italy. In ancient Rome where they do the Colosseum fights and it's just a gladiator fight to the death. This guy would be a great referee for that, but I think he's a bit confused. This is the UFC. I think his goal was to try and get a f the first death in the UFC. I don't understand what he what his, what his goal was. For him, the fight isn't over until they're dead. You know, someone gets knocked out, 10 significant strikes to the jaw later. You know, maybe they're going to recover. He's a terrible referee and I'm glad he's not. I'm glad he's sacked from the UFC. Dana White saw it as well. Terrible referee. He just allows fighters to take unnecessary damage, basically. That's all he does, wants fighters to take unnecessary damage. And I genuinely believe if he kept refereeing fights, he probably would have someone killed. Like, you've got people like Mark Goddard, who has a stern word with fighters, who will tell fighters off if they, you know, maybe hit after the bell or hit in the wrong place multiple times. Mario Yamazaki is complete opposite of Mark Goddard. He wants that to happen. You know, you could headbutt your opponent and, he'll, you know, he'll just smile, he'll grin. I don't understand how he managed to get in the UFC. He must have been doing some dodgy amateur, so, amateur shows to get in the UFC, but I don't know how who hired him. Whoever hired this guy should also be fired. Um, yeah, he, he would have been great for the ancient Rome Italy gladiator fights, but in the UFC... Nah, he, someone would have got seriously hurt. Like, imagine it was like, I don't know, a Volkanovski Korean zombie. If this guy was the referee for Volkanovski Korean zombie, all I'm saying is we would not be we would not be seeing Korean zombie fight at Max Holloway again. Korean zombie would probably be retired with irreversible damage. There's times when the fighters literally stop fighting because they're waiting for Mario to stop the fight. He's a terrible ref. I'm glad he's out the UFC, and in my opinion. The worst referee to grace the company. But again, there's been a lot of memes made out of this guy. You know, the fight is not over until I say it is. So I'm going to have to say Mario Yamazaki. Worst ref. Next, worst commentator. I think it's John Gooden. 
He's a presenter who's been given the role to commentate. I don't understand why they did that. He's just a, a presenter who they decided to give a role for commentating. Um, he's good at interviewing fighters, you know, at UFC London Media Day and things like that. He's essentially just a male version of Megan Olivia. I don't understand why they've given him a commentator role as well. He only ever commentated UFC London as well. Like, he's never, I don't think he's ever commentated an event outside of London or Paris. And he just says the most basic things like, wow, that's a great right hook there from Tom Aspinall. He, and, and the thing is, the problem with him as well, when it's UFC London, people like him and Bispin only ever talk about the British fighters. Like, watch that Tom Aspinall fight back with Marcin Tabura, and they don't talk about Marcin Tabura once. All they do is big up Aspinall for the entire fight. And same for the entire card. All he talks about is British fighters. He doesn't have a clue about any other fighter on the card besides the British people. You know, when it, when it's two foreign people fighting, he may as well be off the commentary. He's a casual. I think he's got martial arts experience. I think he's I think he's like a black belt in jiu-jitsu. But regardless, that's irrelevant. He's just a presenter who's been given the role to commentate, and he can't commentate. He only commentates UFC London. He's essentially just Bisping with less martial arts knowledge. His voice is pretty, well, I don't want to say weird, but it is a bit weird. As It is a bit weird. Um, you know, he sounds like, he sounds basically like Bisping 10 years ago. But, yeah, I'd, I'd think he's a terrible, terrible commentator. He's biased towards British fighters as well because that's the only people he actually knows. I don't think he's like, he doesn't ruin the UFC, but he, I don't know. Like, you, him and Bisping are unbearable together because they just talk over each other. They got get annoyed at each other. You know, Bisping's getting annoyed that John Gooden's talking over him and then John... Yeah, he doesn't bring anything to the commentary table. Doesn't bring anything to the UFC. Well, maybe he's a good presenter. I'll give him... A, he should be a presenter, not a commentator. But, yeah, get him off the commentary. We need Dan Hardy back. But, yeah, I'm going to say he's the worst commentator. And our worst judge... Now, I'm not, I don't want to spend too long on this one because... When it comes to judges, there's so many judges, but the one that I've seen be consistently bad is Adelaide Bird. I don't know how to say her first name. Adelaide Bird. But she's a terrible commentator. She's She went viral for that. I think it was Canelo versus uh, Triple G3 or 2. Um, where she, I think she gave Canelo a 118 to 110 round, which was terrible. I don't know. It was not that far apart. I mean, in 118 to 110 is terrible. Um, she can't judge. She can't judge boxing, and even in MMA, she can't judge MMA. Most, I'm, I'm convinced that most MMA fans could judge better than her. You know, get I don't know, get any UFC fan, any diehard UFC fans on the on the judging table, and they'll be better than her. I don't understand how she's been given the role to judge boxing and MMA. She's even been criticised by Joe Rogan and John Anik. There was a clip where John Anik and Joe Rogan was mocking her for the take she had on um, on Canelo and Triple G. And she actually thought that Jalen Turner beat Dan Hooker recently at UFC 290. That was like the last straw. Um, if you've watched that fight, you'll know that Dan Hooker beat Jalen Turner pretty convincingly. Jalen Turner scraped to, scraped to win in the first round. Every other round was dominant with Dan Hooker. And I don't know what she saw. Maybe she had steamed up glasses, but Dan Hooker won that fight. Jalen Turner did not. She needs to be sacked from the UFC. And it's not just her. There's a lot of judges that make mistakes, but she just consistently makes bad mistakes. She's been called out by other boxing fans as well and other boxing media members. She's just a terrible judge. I think she's getting too old. I don't know how she's managed to even become a judge in the first place. She looks like she works at like a, works at like a knitting factory. How has she become a judge? I don't know, but... Yeah, she's a terrible judge. Get her off the judging board. And finally, the worst arenas. Now, I know this isn't necessarily a job, but whoever's picking to go to Brazil needs to be sacked because it is the worst any any arena in Brazil. The Brazilian fighters are amazing. You know, Charles Oliveira, Alejandro Pantoja, Alex Pereira. Brazilian fighters are amazing. The Brazilian crowd, I mean, Colby Covington said it best. The Brazilians will attack anyone who isn't Brazilian no matter what. Like, they'll throw stuff at Brandon Moreno. They'll, you know, chant, horrible chants. They're just not the greatest crowd to have. They boo over everything that isn't Brazilian. Even if a Brazilian and another non-Brazilian person have a fair fight, they're still going to boo the non-Brazilian. They're so... I don't know what it is. Even though you will die, chance like, oh, Mauro... I'm not even going to try and say it, bro. I'm not Brazilian, but... Their, their chance, they just got dodgy chance as well. And they didn't even stay for Glover Teixeira's retirement. Glover Teixeira, the 42-year-old champion who retired, their 42-year-old Brazilian champion who retired in front of them, they didn't even stay. They just left the arena because he lost. 
They're selfish fans. Colby Covington said it best. Brazil is a dump. Yeah, the fighters are amazing, but the crowd, it's like they've never ever had like a, a sporting event in their country, which they have, but they act like they've never had a sporting event and they just go wild for the Brazilians. Um, but yeah, they're, ju they're just not an enjoyable. Like you've got you've got countries like Australia and the UK that were like the perfect crowd. They might give a boo to the, the, the non-English fighter, but you know, they're, they're not going to start throwing shit at them, but the Brazilians just go over the top. And whoever keeps saying that the Braz whoever keeps like giving the UFC the option to go to Brazil needs to be fired. Please, I don't want to go here again. I know there's a fight night, UFC Sao Paulo, I think it is. Uh, Curtis Blades versus Jelton Almeida, but the Brazilians, I don't like them all. They've ruined UFC 29, was it UFC 292? I think it was 293. Whatever it was, please don't go to Brazil. But that is my list of the worst people at every job in the UFC. Please let me know if you want me to do a part two with the best at every job, but that's my list for the worst. Thank you for watching.